Coming up on This Week in Radio Tech, our guest is Tom Ray. Tom has this ability to find failures and talk about them and actually complain about them in a kind of a curmudgeonly way, right? It sure seems like this past year has been the year of fails and bad things. And we're going to analyze a lot of those and maybe have some advice that will help us out in 2021. That's coming up next on Twerk. This Week in Radio Tech is brought to you by Broadcasters General Store with outstanding service, savings, and support online at bgs.cc. By Broadcast Bionics with the Bionics Studio, including talk show control, social media, and visual radio, Broadcast Bionics brings exceptional audience engagement to radio and TV. By Angry Audio, audio problems disappear when you get angry at angryaudio.com. And by Max Connect Wireless, prioritized high-speed internet service designed for transmitter sites and remote broadcasts. Hey, welcome into This Week in Radio Tech, our last show of 2020. And thank goodness. It's episode number 525. I'm Kirk Harnack. And, um, uh, well, let me go ahead and bring in Tom Ray, and then we'll talk about a few sad things and then some serious fails. Tom Ray is my guest this week on This Week in Radio Tech, and no one can find more failures in the world. Close second is Alex Hartman, but Tom Ray is here, and he can <laughs> he can find the fails. Tom, welcome in. Good to see you. Good to see you, Kirk. It's uh, good to be here, and uh, yeah, not failing right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Good. Yeah. We're, we're, we're here now. Um we're uh, unfortunately my spirits are still uh pretty darkened from the passing of our good friend and my good friend and good friend to so many of you uh, our uh, co-host for 11 years um chris tobin um uh, in case you haven't heard and most of you have by now that chris tobin passed away uh, on uh, december the 19th I, I believe it was just before christmas um if you are watching the show live uh, or a quick replay uh, uh, near to the time it was produced uh, there will be uh, internment services for uh, Chris uh, on uh, Sunday. That is uh, Sunday coming up on, uh, what is that, January the um, uh, 3rd, Sunday, January 3rd in New York City. Uh, there are details online. Uh, we'll put a link in the show notes to, uh, to that. Uh, I um, Honestly, I, 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 I bought a plane ticket to go, and I was advised by um, his... Um, his uh, widow, Lisa Chase, that uh, there was just is not going to be room in the funeral home uh, because of the COVID restrictions. So um, she strongly advised, hey, we'd love to have you here, but um, there's just there's probably not going to be room. There's going to be more people than, than they will allow in. I don't want you to fly all that way, travel all that way, and then not even be able to, to get in. Uh, there will be a burial on uh, Monday. The uh, I believe that's the 4th. So uh, that is what is coming up for um, remembering Chris Tobin. As I've promised, we will do a tribute show. And uh, with the holidays and everything, uh, I haven't done any work on that yet. I will be doing work on that uh, coming up this weekend, and we'll announce when that show will be. For those of you uh, interested, there will be a Zoom meeting um, between the two um, uh, internment um, uh, services, if you will. It's not, not a full mass, uh, but uh, uh, there will be a, a Zoom meeting where there will be people talking about Chris, what he meant to them. And I believe uh, the, uh, the uh, pastor from the church is going to be there as well uh, in the Zoom meeting. Uh, Rodney, uh, Rodney Belazer is putting this together. A lot of you know Rodney, a New York City uh, um, broadcast engineer. Anyway, we'll have details on that just as soon as we get the Zoom link. We will post that on our Facebook site, my personal site as well. So we'll get that out. To the, if there will be a Zoom at uh, 4 Eastern time on Sunday, 4 Eastern time this coming Sunday. I don't have the link yet. It hasn't been created, but it will be probably in the next 24 hours. So we should have that for you, and we'll post it. So thank you for your, uh, for your love and concern. And uh, we sure do miss Chris. Uh, also, we just got word today that another beloved broadcast engineer, Mike McCarthy from the Chicago area, Mike has passed away. So, you know, we're all getting to this age where some of our very good friends uh, and colleagues and people that we work with and love and have known for years and years and years uh, are just um, are not going to be with us you know, for the rest of our lives. So uh, I hate to start the show on these notes, but life is life and uh, life does go on. Um, and for those of us who are still here, and uh, hopefully there are more people, you know, coming up in the broadcast and engineering and media engineering worlds to uh, to fill the gaps. But it's tough. Tom, I wonder if you might have uh, any thought or word or two that you'd like to say about uh, about 
uh, Chris Tobin. Uh, again, we are going to do a full tribute show, but if you'd like to say something now, I'd, I'd, I'd be interested to hear it. Oh, well, Chris, uh, as we all know, was just a great guy. Um, good friend. I've known him a long time. Uh, matter of fact, one of the, uh, one of my favorite pictures, of course, I have a lot of pictures of, of me with celebrities and, and in various broadcast facilities. But one of my favorite pictures is when we did the, um, we had the New York Giants ticker tape parade, which went right by the WOR studios. So Chris, um, you know, Chris was working at 1010 Winds at the time, and he came down, and we lent him a, a corner in the sales department uh, where he could set stuff up, and he had a reporter there, and we had reporters on the street, and we just had a blast. Um, he was always good. He, he was always good to talk with. He was always good to talk to. He was always a gentleman, always. Um, and, you know, I, I, I'm going to miss him. I, I mean, you texted me with the information uh, and I was in the middle of the car doctor show on a Saturday and I, I glanced at my phone and went, you know, it says something about Chris Tobin. I'm supposed to be on the show uh, coming up. I, I'll, I'll yeah. look at it later. And when we got off the air, I looked at it and just almost fell off the chair because it was, I was that shocked. I really, really I was. I know I was, we all remember where we were when some, some incredible, uh, earth shaking and bad news uh, hits. And, uh, and I was, I was at my dad's house and I just, I, I, um, I, I didn't break down, but man, I couldn't, I couldn't really, uh, effectively, uh, deal with helping my dad with some things, uh, for the rest, rest of, of that day. So anyway, uh, we will have a tribute show and we'll get you the zoom link just as soon as we can. So in honor of this awful year, and Hey, you know what? Maybe some good things happened to you this year. And if so, I'm happy for you. And I know Tom is too. And I know Chris would okay. be too. But we're going to cover some fails. This has been such an awful year in so many ways, uh, and I, and as uh, as <laughs> as we sometimes say um, in the in the church group I'm in, um, you know, some some of these bad things are spoken and some are unspoken. And I understand if uh, if uh, me or Tom or or you uh, have some things that have happened to you in this year that you are just going to remain unspoken because there's just it's just it's just been awful in so many ways. Um, and Hey, I, I, icing on the cake, Don Wells passed away. You know, my oh, childhood heartthrob. I mean, oh, geez. Uh, I mean, uh, you know, I don't want to say I, mean, I got, give my left arm to, to be with Don Wells. It got Marianne. Yeah. I mean, yeah. come on. <sighs> well, all right. I, I, I wish we could pick up the happiness, but we are going to pick up the failures and some of them, well, some of them may be kind of funny. Others we're going to learn from. And that's, that's one reason why, Hey, I, I've, I've been a pilot before in my life. That's one reason why pilots study accidents. Um, so they, if they can say, Hey, that's not going to happen to me. I'm not going to make that mistake. Um, or some pilots you know, with pride say, Oh, I wouldn't do that. Yeah, well, yeah, you might. So yeah, you got to learn from these things. So we're going to go through a whole bunch of pictures here in the next hour and learn everything we can. Tom, are you up for it? You bet I'm up for it. And uh, actually, would you like to uh, would would you like to hear a personal note on how, how, with 2020 summed up in a personal note? Absolutely, please do that, and then we'll get to the pictures. Go ahead. Well, unfortunately, my wife two weeks ago was hit with a uh, was hit with a kidney stone, mm. and I had to call call an ambulance, and I did, and they came, and they were going to take her out, and they said, you know, you mind we. We just called for some extra hands. We saw the fire department out and about, and I thought for a minute and said, you know, the reason the fire department's out and about is they're bringing Santa around the neighborhoods. Okay. And a fire okay. truck pulls up out in front, which is fine. And then a fire engine pulls up out in front, and four guys come pouring out of the engine into the house, and there's Santa waving on top to the neighbors. And I'm like, oh, I had to take a picture. I mean, you had to laugh. You had to laugh. It's summed up 2020 right there. <laughs> <sighs> yeah. oh. uh, Dr. Santa on the uh, on the fire truck, and uh, while the paramedics and everybody else are, are helping with uh, take take care of your wife. Wow. Yeah, so, exactly. uh, by the way, is, is there is the speaking of, of, of that, uh, uh, stone, what is, is, is there any good news about that situation? Uh, well, uh, she'll be going in probably next week, uh, for, for a day and they're going to blow it apart with a laser because it's quite a big stone. And, um, the bad news is they won't let me, they won't let me play with the laser. <laughs> Can you imagine that, Kirk? <laughs> I don't get to play it's a, it's a mate. 
you know, it's amazing what lasers can do. And that that's a whole, I'd love to meet some expert in how lasers are used in all these different fields of medicine. Uh, because do they just blast things and, 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 or sear things or tack things? I've had a laser in my eye to tack, uh, torn retina. Mm -hmm. And that was not, it, it, that was not pleasant. It was just not pleasant. The, 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 the first, the first 50 laser blasts in my eye weren't so bad. The next 300, each one of them hurt. Wow. 350 laser blasts. Yeah. Yeah. It was, it was unbelievable. (laughs) Hey, the, the, the doctor even said, now, by the time I'm done, you're not going to be able to see anything out of that eye, probably for half an hour. <laughs> Don't worry. Oh, it's the way it works. <laughs> it's your eye, protect, it's your nerve protecting itself from all the, all the photons I'm going to shoot into it. Hey, let's, without further ado, let's get these pictures, okay? Uh, Suncast is our producer. He's going to show us these pictures in whatever order they come up in. Ah, it's ah, one of Tom's pictures, isn't it? I yeah. know that picture. I, oh, my uh, gosh, I what is this? this? Well, I walked into a transmitter site to, to take care of a transmitter problem. While, while I'm looking around, I see this. This is the, uh, these are the status relays, which, by the way, are 120-volt relays for the tower lighting circuit. And I looked oh, at those and went, goodness. just no. <laughs> just no. Oh, I, 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 I don't understand how this place stayed, uh, stays on the air, honest to God. <laughs> Uh, you mean there, there's more other engineering around the plant like this? Oh yeah. Well, there was the, uh, they have the, uh, let, let's see, there's, there's a set of relays that's across the power coming in. It's across the incoming power before the circuit breaker. Uh, okay. And it's like, I, I'm, I, it's like, I'm looking at, I, I just backed up and went, no, I'm just going to sit here. Uh, Hey, this, but, but, oh, I want to, I can, we, can we back up one? Yeah, we got to back up some pictures. And by the way, Suncast, I really like that uh, that that split screenshot you did with Tom in there. If if you want to yeah. keep that up, that's that's really cool. I don't know if that causes you a problem or not because it looked like the pictures went forward, but that's pretty cool if you want to do it. Okay. Uh, by the way, Tom, at the bottom of this picture is is that the solid state flasher? Uh, yes, that's the solid state flasher. Uh, no, no, I take that back. That's a uh, oh? that's either the side light or the beacon pickup. I'm not sure which one it is. I didn't get close enough. <laughs> oh, it's okay. So it detects that the lights are on it, it, and yeah, gives you a current sense. Yep. Okay. Wow. But, but, wow. but imagine okay. if you had to turn the lights on manually. Look at where the switch is. <laughs> Gee, yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> uh, let's look at the next picture when Suncast can do that. We'll move on to the next one. Uh, now, what the, what the, the world? This is, cool. That, this, uh-huh. this is cool. This is very cool. I've got a client. They have a. Uh, they have a radio station that's actually across the street from where this uh, this this helical antenna is, and right. the 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 facility they're in now is owned by, well, for lack of a better phrase, a little old lady. Uh, her husband had passed three years ago. He doesn't quite know what to do with it, and she's let the place run down. So, uh, I'd been looking at this tower, and needless to say, in the next couple of weeks, we're moving to this tower across the street. But when I when I drove behind the building. There's this helical antenna, and I'm looking at it going, what the heck is that? And I'm talking to the owner of the building, and the building used to be a microwave test facility for General Electric back in the 1960s. This antenna is a satellite antenna, and Mm -hmm. there is documentation at the site that shows that it was used for uh, testing they were doing with the CIA for briefcase telephones. Hmm. Wow. Uh, you know, <laughs> helical antennas used to be popular with uh, news trucks, news ENG trucks. Mm-hmm. I, I, yep. And they're not popular now that I've noticed. Maybe there's still some around. What's the benefit of a helical as opposed to some kind of a small dish? You know, I, you know, to be honest with you, I really don't know. Um, I think this was... You know, let's, let's face it, this was the 60s, so a helical antenna, I mean, it was kind of a known quantity um, where where the dish, you know, you know, the dishes have developed over the years. And I don't think the dish was quite fully developed yet at this point in time. Um, I'm, I'm, and, and, I, I'm and I think they Tom, actually had a little better yeah. control with this. Um, uh, the helical, uh, I think that you had to have um, the helical receive antenna had to match the direction of the helix of the transmitted signal. And uh, because if well, it was opposite approach. No. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's true. But but if you think of a satellite dish, I mean, you have uh, um, 
horizontal or vertical polarization, it's kind of the same thing right. with the exception that this is, you know, is either a clockwise corkscrew or it's a counterclockwise cork corkscrew. It's one right, of the other. But it's, it's the full 360 degree rotation. It's not, it's not vertical or horizontal. It is yes, all the way around and the right. transmitting and the receiving tend have, to have to be the same. I just wonder if this helps with, um, if there's any kind of multipath or bounce or, uh, aberrations from the atmosphere that cause a problem. I, I don't know. Uh, that, that'd be a, that'd be a nice thing to have a guest to tell us about helical antennas exactly. and what their benefit is. Yeah. But that, that's what and, this and, antenna is. It's just one of the coolest things I've seen this year. <laughs> it was like, really? <laughs> it it kind of looks like it was uh, handmade, but very well done. Oh, exactly. It, yeah. It, 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 I mean, this thing, this thing's built like a, uh, like a brick outhouse. You know what I'm saying? You, you can't, I don't think, I, I don't think you could destroy this thing. How big is that? Uh, what, what can you give us an idea of the size of that? The heat, the length of the helix looks to be about eight, eight to eight to 10 feet. Oh, that um, is that big. Okay. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, this thing's huge. It's absolutely huge. The, the, the pipe it's sitting on is about a four inch pipe. So to give you a pers you know, perspective and the, uh, and the rear end of the car there in the bottom of the picture, that's the oh, back end of my go. car. So, <laughs> ah, okay, good. All right. Uh, let's move on. Let's move to the next picture. Let's see what we have. Ah, ah one of these things is not like the other. Okay. Uh, well, is that tower shorter than it should be? Uh, just a little bit. The, uh, this is, uh, one of my. Yeah, one of my sold it, and we. Uh, when I found this, it was on the day that uh, we were going to do the final walkthrough with the sale. And needless to say, the closing has been put off because we had a big <laughs> windstorm that weekend. Um, and these towers, if if you look, and actually I don't know the order of the pictures, but the next one may show it. Uh, in the middle of the tower on your right, if you take a look, you see it comes to a taper. It does come to a taper, yeah. On the those right hand, there, there you go. Yeah, the, those okay. in the nineteen sixties were segmented towers, where the whole tower was used during the day, and the and the top of the tower. There used to be a contactor up there. The top of the tower was shut off at night to reduce efficiency. What? Yep. To reduce and efficiency. That, okay. Yeah, and that is sitting on a ceramic base insulator. And is that maybe a hundred plus feet up the tower? One hundred and fifty feet. 150 feet up the tower and, is the base insulator. Yep. And, you, you know, it, it, since that time, the, you, you know, rules have changed and, and things have changed and the, po and the power level on the station's changed. But uh, if you, if you kind of really take a look, you'll see that there are a couple of copper straps that actually bypass that insulator now, but they left the insulators yeah. in because, of course, you know, you leave the insulators in. Um what happened and, and we actually found and i've got and, and there's a picture coming up of the tower section in the field we found the tower section um and we've looked at it uh we've looked at it thoroughly uh yeah there there it is the insulator is intact the insulator oh has no damage on it at all uh the wow. tower itself if, uh, they they went along the whole tower i mean there's of course a little bit of rust and you can see a little bit on you know here in the foreground but I mean, the tower, it's, uh, it's not anywhere near like rusted through. So it wasn't failure of the tower. It wasn't a failure of the uh, insulator. They found that uh, this tower used Philly strand. And mm. with Philly strand, the bottom of the Philly strand is usually just regular steel guy wire. And they mm. use a preform, you know, which is one of those things that, you know, twist the cables together. You, you see them commonly on the bottom of, uh, of utility poles that have a guy wire on them. Uh, and, and you see right. them commonly on, at, at transmitter sites. It looks like the preform probably wasn't put on properly 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. And the, one of the preforms came apart and that of course slackened the guy wire significantly and the wind picked it up and down it went. Wow. Wow. So, okay. oh, and, wow, and this, this one here, this is another one of my client stations. Three years ago, I said, you know what? We have a couple of chips out of this insulator. We got to do something about it. And well, they didn't have the money. And well, you know what? That's going to cost and blah, 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 blah. Okay. Well, about a year and a half ago, they sold the tower to Vertical Bridge, who bought the tower lock, stock, and barrel, never asked for any changes. So 
this isn't my client's problem anymore, but it is his problem because he's got, uh, this is an AM tower. It's got an FM antenna on it and it's got an STL antenna for his other FM. So, mm-hmm. um, I walked out to look, to look at something, glanced at this thing, walked very calmly in the building and said, get your stuff and get out. Cause if that tower the, comes over, it's going to hit the studio. Yeah. This um, is a self-supporting tower, right? Yes, it's a, it's a four-legged self-supporter. Those legs are about yeah. ten to ten to twelve feet apart. So this is this okay. is a big mother. It's four hundred feet. Um, tower crew was out the next day. They've braced the tower, uh, and and next week they're going to be actually replacing that insulator. So th- this ought to be something to see from a distance. Um, but what happened with this guy? You know, I, I, if I had to guess, which is what I'm guessing, is with the, with the cracks and the chips out of the insulator, you get water in there. And this is in a, this is in way in northern New York where it gets really cold. Matter of fact, in January, it's typically at night, several nights in January, it's minus 30 degrees, um, which is just a little cold. Uh, but I, I'm guessing that water got into the cracks in this thing and froze and expanded, and you're seeing the result. The That leg of the tower is two inches lower than it should be. Oh, wow. Okay. So, which so the tower is 400 feet. The top of that tower is probably a foot to a foot and a half off. And does that mean there is sideways pressure on the on at least two of the other insulators, or yes. are they uh, okay? Okay, so there's yeah, uh, unequal yeah, pressure. Yeah, there, the there's sideways pressure. It's not all that bad yet because it's only two mm-hmm. inches at the bottom. Um, so the tower crew is going to come in. They, you know, they they've welded plates on the tower. They've attached the plates to the um, you know to the to the pier there. Uh, interestingly, they when they drilled into the pier, they didn't hit any of the rebar. So the tower, the, while the tuning changed, man, the transmitter didn't seem to care. <laughs> okay. Um, All right. So, and they've also welded a couple of plates uh, higher up that you can't see in the picture. And they're going to bring in the pneumatic jack and they're going to jack that sucker up and pull that insulator out. And like I said, I don't want to be anywhere near it. <laughs> um, I used to, I used to take care of a station that had a, uh, uh, sort of this. It was a four leg self supporter. About, I thought it was about fifteen feet uh, s- uh, leg width on the on the ground, and it was four hundred feet tall. And a tornado took it out. Really? Um, wow. And now it would, a tornado would have taken it out. I mean, it was a. It felt very solid. The tower was in good shape, but a tornado took it out. And they replaced it with with a guide tower because it was a lot cheaper now than the four legged self supporter. Um, and in fact, that four-legged self-supporter was in Jackson, Tennessee, and it was also segmented partway up the tower with really? more insulators. Yeah. And and it was that system where they would phase, they could phase. They they tried experiments back in the 40s. They could phase the top and bottom to each other on the AM, you know, on the AM signal. Of course, it hmm. also held an antenna. Wow. That's wow. cool. That's hey, cool. Uh, we got more pictures of fails and fixes. But lots of fails, including some of yours that you submitted on our Facebook page. That's coming up in just a few minutes. I'm Kirk Harnack, along with Tom Ray, here on New Year's Eve Day for This Week in Radio Tech, our 525th episode. You're going to want to see some of these pictures coming up. I mean, the Toms were great. There's more great ones all coming up after this word from Broadcast Bionics. We'll be right back.
Broadcast Bionics at bionic.radio. Check them out, bionic.radio. Broadcast Bionics, clever people make amazing products for engaging your audience and social media, putting people on the air in really smart ways, uh, visual radio, all kinds of contesting, uh, even uh, apps for um, she who shall not be named because she's not muted right now. <laughs> the, the speaker of the house, if you will. <laughs> Broadcast Bionics. You can get Broadcast Bionics in the U.S. through Broadcaster's General Store, or you can just go to the website, bionic.radio. They really understand how to do this stuff and how to engage your audience. Thanks for sponsoring the show, Broadcast Bionics. Really appreciate it. All right, let's jump into more pictures, if we can. Uh, Suncast, we'll just jump right in. You, you start them, and we'll talk about them. Okay, we had a big failure. Uh, this was actually a win. This is the back of my car, uh, one of my BMW, and uh, it is a... Um, Scala Paraflector, uh, the PR450U, uh, w without the feed horn, but uh, I got, um, I was given that by a Nashville broadcaster uh, to fix a problem. <laughs> we'll see what the problem is here pretty soon. Let's go to the next slide and we'll see if we can have any pictures of the disaster. I'm not th th there. Oh, there's the, now, there's the reason why somebody loaned me that Scala Paraflector or gave it to me. Um, that was a 65 foot tower. I didn't like that tower at all. That's, uh, I, I don't know what brand that is. It's not a wind charger, but it's something terrible. Uh, you do see a lot of ham radio people use them. You can put them up yourself. It's it's all bent metal. It's like an erector set. I mean, it, the, when you climb on it, your feet hurt because it's like an erector set. The edges are all kind of, I mean, they're folded over, but they're sharp. It's not like climbing a, a real tower, but it was 65 feet tall. And the tornado that went right by the radio station, it tore down lots of other stuff. Um, the tornado made it about 35 feet tall and broke some stuff. Let's move on to the next picture. Actually, I see your um, problem. You got significant downward tilt. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> oh. So we ended up uh, we ended up doing some emergency replacement with IP. IP came to save the day. That is a um, an Omnia MPX node, and you can see the results on my laptop there. Uh, you know, the IP packets uh, coming through. We were able to get some IP out to this uh, transmitter site and uh, and get us back on the air there. Next next slide here, Suncast. We'll see what um, what is in store for us. Oh, it's just a picture of the router. Um, we had a problem. We have two tower sites that are within mm, five or 600 feet of each other, at least within 1,000 feet of each other. And we had wireless ISP going to the West Tower but we needed it at the east tower <laughs> so that's that's where the that's where the problem uh, was with no longer being able to uh, to receive the IP audio we had been setting uh, over our own link. So let's look at the next picture. And so I used this router to uh, feed. Uh, okay, this is out of order now, so we'll get back to that story. This was sent into us by a uh, friend on Facebook. And I'm sorry, I don't think I have the uh, the the link up or the information up right now. But you can see this is a peer. The soil here is a peat bog, and I'm only vaguely, I've only been standing on a peat bog once in my life, actually in Ireland, but the pier, as you can see, has tilted over pretty badly, and I would say that tower is in very big danger of falling. They put a new um, copper ring around it and attached the, the I, I would want to be under that tower working on that. With, Ooh, no. Yeah. Yeah. They put that. I, Let's move on to the next one. That makes, that gives me the willies. <laughs> Working right there. Oh, now, the, here's something that I learned in the last few days. This is the Comscope. If, you can buy these from Comscope. It says Comscope on the package, but it says Andrew on the connector. This is for half-inch, uh, you know, the Andrew LDF 450 cable. And this is, the, this is the back end of an end connector. And here's my advice about this. Um, they sell... They sell a couple different tools to help you pre-form your coax so it all goes together well. My advice is buy the tool because if you don't have the tool, your chances like of success it. are severely <laughs> diminished. Yeah. Um, I thought I had it done right. I put it together, and lo and behold, the entire connector came off because I messed up the watch band spring and um, or something, and or I didn't flare it out enough or something. And I couldn't fix it after that. So I ended up finding pieces and parts of another connector. Let's move on. And just my, my advice with that, with these new Andrew connections, I say they're new. I don't know how new they are. Um, get the tools. There's a tool that goes on the end of your drill. You can use that. Or there's a hand tool, I think. But get the tools. Don't try to form the stuff by hand unless you're really good. 
This is some duct tape uh, holding together uh, an, an antenna. It looks like a then it looks like a, di a dielectric brand FM antenna. Yeah, or maybe sold under yeah, the sure, RCA it, brand. It sure does, and it, and it just yeah. goes to prove that duct tape fixes everything. It does. It, it does. Uh, that was moving, and they didn't want it to move, and so they put duct tape on it. Now, if it was the other thing, you know, if it was not moving and it should have moved, then use WD forty. Right. But in this case, use duct tape. But this is a hundred kilowatt ERP FM. I don't know how much power goes into each bay here, but um, it's a hundred kilowatt. And I'm so sorry. I closed the, the 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 page that had this on, so I'm, I I didn't make note of names. You know who you are. Thank you for sending the picture. Beautiful pick. Uh, you know, we need to look on. up the uh, we we need to look up the uh, test voltage for uh, duct tape to see what it actually <laughs> will arc right. over at. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what's next here? What's next? What's the next disaster? Well, th okay, this is my disaster. I showed this a few weeks ago, but I'll show it again real quickly. Uh, this was both engineering and political. Um, we were told that day that we could not install our IP link or our backup single bay vertical only FM antenna on that building. And I understand that uh, there's there's a political situation there, and I'm sure it'll get resolved. There'll probably be some lawyers involved, but it'll get resolved one day. So that that uh, the object, the, the 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 metal object to which that IP uh, dish is attached, is a handrail. It was put there decades ago in concrete as a handrail. I guess proposing that people would walk this ridge in Hawaii. Well, people don't walk this ridge. First of all, it is private property. Um, well, that's where there's some of the, some of the dispute is about whose private property it is, but, uh, it's, so it's not used for tourists or hikers anymore, but it's 60 feet away from the building. And I thought, Hey, I can run 60 feet of cat five out there and not cause anybody a problem on the building. So that's my IP link to our radio station in Hawaii. And it works fabulously. Let's move on. But, uh, and now this was the day, this was the fail that day. Um, the helicopter couldn't come pick us up because why? because the top of the mountain became enveloped in clouds and the visibility was such that the helicopter couldn't come get us. So we had to hike down. Now that, that was my uh, partner there, uh, David Lister. Um, David's our station caretaker salesperson at the moment, and he does an air shift. And that's us walking across what we found out later is called dead man's bluff. Now it's actually the ridge or the rim of a volcano. And um, it looks like there's plenty of vegetation there. It's deceiving. The actual rock there is probably not more than five feet wide. And if you start to fall down one side, if you grab that vegetation, it will simply break off in your hands. It is not, it's not like a weed, right? That you can't pull. Excellent. You can just tear this stuff up. So if you start to fall and, and slide down the side, by the way, down each side where you can't see because of the fog, because of the cloud, down each side, 500 feet. Hey, Kurt, and it's remind almost, me never to Remind me never go to never to go to a theme park with you, okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Wow. Um, yeah. So we we carefully traversed that because we had to. If we if, unless we wanted to sleep in the transmitter building that night, and I didn't want to, uh, we had to traverse this and go a lot farther. There. Look at that. This is not a fail. This is this is a happy moment when the helicopter found us eight minutes before the sunset. Literally eight minutes before sunset. There's the helicopter. Bruno, the pilot, and uh, that's one of those. If, I, if you don't mind my saying, that's one of those badass Hughes 500D helicopters. That that thing was <laughs> awesome. That thing. And Bruno knew how to make that thing walk and talk. There's power lines to the left and a bunker hill to the right. <laughs> so uh, he, 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 he saw us there. All right. Next, next picture. That, that was the good part of the whole thing. Now, there's another pic of the handrail. And then you can see the vertical only FM antenna. That's a fairly cheap FM antenna. I forget what brand name was on it, but I got to tell you, I was... A lot of people on Facebook uh, poo-pooed that antenna when I posted a picture of it. I thought it was well-made. I really did. I was kind of impressed with it for a, an inexpensive vertical-only antenna. That's a backup antenna, so it's hooked full-time to a backup transmitter, and all we got to do is uh, enable, you know, turn on the power with the IP power strip on that transmitter, and we're, we're on the air. And we could pick it up great uh, in, in Lihue, Hawaii. So next picture, we'll move on. Thank goodness for handrails. <laughs> now, another fail this year. Uh, actually the same day, the same day that Chris Tobin passed away that night, I'm driving my sister and my niece back to Nashville and myself, obviously. And, um, we're about to pass an exit and I holler out to my niece, Hey, you want to go to Chick-fil-A Katie? She said, yeah, which was kind of out of character for her. Cause she's one of these little kids that doesn't eat anything at all. So we took the exit real quick, 
started to pull in the Chick-fil-A and all of a sudden the power steering went out and the power steering went out and the battery light came on and, um, I pulled into a parking spot in a well-lighted area. This was at night. That was well-lighted. And I'll tell you what, man, angels were following me or something because, um, uh, this guy happened within three minutes of me stopping there, popping the hood open and looking and trying to see what's wrong. It was a broken belt. Um, this guy popped along and he said, Hey, y'all need any help? And I said, yeah, I do. He said, well, I'm a part-time mechanic. I'll help you out. And so this guy, uh, not only was the, the, the serpentine belt broken, but it was broken for a reason because the, the tensioner pulley, uh, had flown apart. The bearings had seized Ooh. up and it, it, and I should have, I had the warning signs. I had the squalling noise when I started the car and I didn't pay proper attention to it. It's my fault. I should have looked for the source of the squalling, you know, the, when you start the car up, it, it would, it would settle in after a while. But, uh, we, the, we, we found the outer part of the, of the, uh, the, the tensioner uh, laying, you know, in the, in the, the plastic cover that goes over the bottom of the car. And we found a couple of the ball bearings, the rest of the ball bearings, I'm sure we're somewhere out on I-75. Uh, but this guy, it, it, unbelievably, the AutoZone store that hadn't closed yet for the evening uh, had the pulley and they had the tensioner for a BMW. <laughs> Go figure. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. So this guy actually would not take any money for doing the job. So I said, but you'll take a Christmas gift, won't you? He said, yeah. So I'm, I made his Christmas. I, I paid him what, it, what I think a shop would have charged. So anyway, yeah, bad news came out. Well, let's see what's next. Wow. Okay. So I, honestly, we were prepared to spend the night there that we thought we're gonna have to get a hotel room and who's going to fix my BMW on a Sunday morning, you know? So, so this is the new, um, a year later, we, we couldn't afford, we could not afford to put up a new STL antenna. This is our station in Cleveland, Mississippi. And the little short one there you saw earlier, that's one that got hit by a tornado. Um, and uh, the, you can barely see it, but the paraflector that's on, there's the one that came from uh, the, the kind engineer in Nashville. So we got a self-supporter next to it. Let's move on. A uh, hundred foot used tower, freshly painted. Uh, we'll maybe have another picture of that later. Here's another place. This is an AM station that I'm part owner of in Greenville, Mississippi. And that's a translator, a two bay translator antenna that's on it. Uh, this is a translator for that AM. Well, we started getting a lot of reflected power from it, and um, uh, there's it, it's a it's a insulated base, so it's a hot AM tower. There is an isocoupler from Kintronic that um, crosses the base. There's another isocoupler there that uh, is for the STL receiving antenna. Um, okay, let's stay on this picture for a minute. That that two bay antenna has one of those power dividers. Yes, it's an NXP. I didn't buy it. My my business partner bought it. And, but okay, whatever. Um, it's a two bay. Very, it's the cheapest two bay antenna money can buy. Okay, and it has a power divider. And you can see the bottom part of the power divider there. It's it's the it's the square vertical tube that's lashed to the tower. That's the input. That end connector at the bottom is the input power divider. And the jumper cable because it, it's it's seven eighths coax that goes up the tower. And then, it, and then it's a flexible, you know, like RG8, like uh, coax that goes to the end connector. You can see how tight it's pulled. See how tight it, and this is not a good angle. If you look at it from the side, you can see it's almost a 90 degree bend that the jumper cable makes, right? Yeah, it's wrong. And Mike Patton actually came and did a little sweep of the thing and said, your problem is up in the sky. I can't tell you where, but it's not down here on the ground. Your problem is up there. And so we had a tower climber climb it. And uh, here's where the fail comes in. I'll tell you in a minute. Uh, we weren't absolutely, we went, we didn't know if it was one of the bays or the power divider water in one of the cables from the power divider to the base, or if it was that jumper right there from the coax to the power divider input turned out it was that one, but not without some difficulty to figure that out. So I, that, that's a shot from my drone. I did take a sideways shot. I just couldn't find it. Let's go on, on the next picture. See if we have any more pictures near here. Okay, that's another picture of the failed. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, these are out of order. I really am. Uh, the the failed STL tower. We'll move on to the next one. No, wait, was that actually hanging over the building? Um, I can't tell. No, it was not hanging over the building. It was it was hanging Good. just this way, just this way. Yeah. Wow. Um. Yeah. All right. By the way, uh, of course, when that tornado came through, it tore up all kinds of stuff. 
and we were without internet service. Uh, Sparklight is our usual provider there. Um, and so, hey, along comes Josh Bone to the rescue and Max Connect. So for a week, we were on Max Connect while um, the uh, internet provider got their act together. And, and, uh, and well, I mean, they, look, they had a lot of work to do. They, 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 it, was, it was bad. Uh, so anyways, want to put in a plug there for Max Connect. It worked great. Next picture. And there's a guy working on uh, this guy bravely. He's actually, he's with our wireless ISP. And he uh, took everything he could off of the broken section. And I, I wasn't under the tower to see how he actually, you know, he, he had a, he had a battery powered Sawzall, you know, that, <laughs> that, and he, and yep. that's that, that upper section of tower wasn't that heavy. He, he lashed up to it. You know, he may have hooked it up to his bucket. And uh, so he didn't have to carry the weight of it all, but he did it. Wow. Next picture. Yeah. Good, good work. I'm not sure it was all. Nope. There it was when he was done. He just <laughs> cut the top off of it. <laughs> Let's go on the next picture. And, and, uh, oh, and of course our, our uh, PR 450U, you know, broke, uh, cause it was kind of in, in the elbow of the uh, tower falling over. There's the, there's the one that we were given in the background and there's the one that broke in the foreground. Next picture. And also the feed horn was bad Ooh. on the, uh, on the one that was broken. Um, that, those are the active elements right there, but it was busted open such that it was open to the rain now. And the, the reflector elements, which sit out in front of it, actually, cause they're reflecting from the grid back to the active element, uh, that was broken off too. So we did have to order a brand new feed horn. Uh, the, my friend in Nashville did not have a feed horn to give me. He just had the, the grid. So, next one. So the, oh, the, there we were finished with, uh, you know, the, the reattached or, the, you know, with the, the grid that was given to us. And then we, we just, we tried putting the IP link back up, but now it's 30 feet lower. Okay. Um, and by the way, that there, you can, you can see a tower on the right side of the picture. That's not the tower we're shooting to. The tower we're shooting to is, uh, 6.1 miles away. Uh, you, you can't see it. In fact, you really can't see it from this height, which is why the IP link didn't work. Uh, the, 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 uh, 950 megahertz works. Okay. Cause it's just burning through, through the trees that are, you know, halfway through the path in the Fresnel zone, but the IP link did not work. Uh, we got a new IP link that does work. Let's move on to the next picture. Then, um, this is some of the damage done by the uh, tornado. This was, of course, it's wow. a mobile home, but this is about, oh, a mile away from the radio station, maybe half a mile. And so you can see it, it, uh, it certainly targeted the mobile homes on, on that road. Next picture. Uh, in fact, there was so much damage that it took out a bunch of power lines, those big cross country power lines. And you can see how muddy it is out there in the fields where they have to go access. There, there were actually three runs of power lines all parallel, and it took one set of towers down completely for, I don't know, a mile or two. Um, it took the power. It, it took these people. It took them a week, a full week to get those cranes out to where they needed to be. It was so muddy. They had these enormous wooden pallets. I guess they were wood. I mean, it, uh, wooden pallets big enough for a crane to sit on. And they would stack them one after another. You know, like you're rolling something heavy and you put you put a pipe in front of it and you roll over that pipe and a pipe comes out the back and you run it around to the front. They did that with these pallets. So that was a big fail. So uh, anyway, it, phew, a week just to get out. Then they could start doing the work. A week to get there. Wow. Next picture. All right. Uh, so remember I said I needed uh, IP from the West Tower over to the East Tower. So I had these um, ubiquity radios that we never had used. They were cheap. I mean, uh, I don't know, $300, $400 for the pair. And I put them up and I shot IP connectivity from the tower where we did have IP from our wireless ISP over to the other tower a thousand feet away that didn't have any, any IP. And it works great. We have a station that's been on the air with that now uh, for a year, over, uh, yeah, over a year. Next picture. I know we got to do a, do a commercial break here real shortly. And there's the micro MPX node to save the day. So, you know, um, and, and, uh, it, due to a, a number of circumstances, we quit using the micro MPX node because that wasn't what we actually needed. We were in, ended up using, uh, for the long-term solution, we're using the, uh, the zip one that's down below that Omnia three processor. Next picture. Uh, and on the way back, there, there's no fail about this. I just wanted to include this picture. On the way back from that trip where I fixed so many things from the tornado damage, I was driving by WREC in Memphis. What a classic old AM station on 600 AM. And uh, I 
put the drone up in the air and got this picture. It's a two tower directional, not very directional. And I think they're five kilowatt day and maybe a kilowatt or, or something at night. Anyway, they, they, they was a popular station for many, many years, WREC and uh beautiful art deco transmitter building too. Nice place. Nice place. Hey, let's take a, let's take a break. Tom is going to uh, comment on some of the pictures we've got remaining, but we're going to hear from, um, Oh, I know what we're going to hear from our friends at, um, at Henry. Uh, Tom, while I go grab the prop, tell us what you can about your good experiences with Henry engineering. Oh, Henry engineering. They make great products. Um, one of the things I tend to like about them is they make a product, uh, that's, uh, called the super relay. And a lot of times you use the super relay for, um, on the air lights. Uh, they interface really easy with a lot of, uh, different consoles. Uh, they provide not only uh, dry relay closures, if you're using, for example, 12 volts or 24 volts for the, uh, tower, the, uh, on the air light, but they mm -hmm. also provide a 120 volt outlet. Very convenient. They do. You're speaking of the Henry super relay, aren't you? Yes. Yes. And, and they make and, a whole bunch of other products that are really handy. Well, you know, since, since, uh, remember the days when people would run 110 volts into the audio console to the actual lever switch for the mic, uh, on the console. Oh my God. You're, don't, don't remind me. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, I've been, well, I've been in those consoles. Well, these days is a better solution. This is the Henry super light, which is hmm. an led tally light controller. So this is, this is like the modern equivalent of the super relay. It's called the super light and there's no 110 volts in this. You can't run an, an incandescent bulb with this. This is meant to run LEDs. Uh, so not only, uh, so it has, it has, there's different ways to control it. Uh, there's a cute little manual and you can see, you can download the documentation online and, and you can download this document on, online at the, uh, Henry site, Henry ENG com. Henry ENG.com is the website, but Henry also provides full schematics. And, uh, you know, the, the products are simple, but they're elegantly designed and they work well. So the super light has, um, a number of relay outputs for you, but if you, it can also actually provide the voltage for the led light, as long as it's not over, I think half an amp. So 12 volts, about half an amp is what it will provide. And you can, um, uh, control it with a contact closure, uh, or with uh, 12 volts in or a collected to ground type of closure. You can also control it. Uh, it's got a couple of RJ45 jacks on it. Now, this is not Ethernet, but it takes Cat5 cable uh, and an RJ45 connection, and you can daisy chain these things together. And you can open the top of the box and move a jumper to give each box an address, if you will, an address. And um, uh, you can just, you know, wire these things in, in uh, you know, from one to the, you can daisy chain them and run a whole bunch of studios. If that's what you need to do, I'm not saying everybody needs to do that, but it, it can make your wiring easier if you need to daisy chain these things together. So that's a, that's a cool thing. Uh, so it does have, it has normally open and normally closed relay contact closures. Uh, it's, it's cool. It's a, uh, it's uh, good in, in Europe. It's Rojas compliant. So that's good. Um, it takes uh, a external power of two amps max. Um, anyway, another good product from Henry. It comes with a little power adapter right there in, in, in the box. And the documentation, like I said, it's got, they, Henry does schematics. So you can easily figure out what you're doing. And the instructions are clear. Henry Engineering. And, of course, for all your audio, uh, you know, uh, level changes, those um, uh, to go from pro level to uh, what they call IHF or, you know, the RCA connectors, that's the right way to do it. So often people uh, try to hook up uh, an unbalanced connection to a balanced input, like, like on an Axia X node. And, you know, sometimes it can work, but sometimes we get a hum. And the right way to do it is to use a, a balancing or unbalancing device. So, Henry, thank you very much. Hank Landsberg, appreciate your sponsorship. You can get Henry, of course, from Broadcaster's General Store, and that's where you should. You can call Broadcaster's General Store just about any time. They may not be open tomorrow, <laughs> New Year's Day, but uh, you can call them almost any other time at 352-622-7700. That's 352-622-7700. I got that number memorized for years. Uh, or you can check out their website any day, even New Year's Day, even Christmas Day at bgs.cc, bgs.cc. Love those folks. They do good work there at Broadcaster General Store. Just watch out for All right, hey. Yeah, well, you watch out for Buck. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> let's, let's, get, let's get some more fails in here quickly because uh, we're going to have to go before too awful long. All right. Oh, this was cool. I, I, I have some other pictures. Have the, this, this is a fiber splicer. 
that really piece of equipment, right? That's 15 grand. I just met the guy yesterday wow. uh, in Greenville, Mississippi. They're getting ready to run fiber to our radio station there. And uh, shout out to Brian. Brian was there um, and uh, really sharp uh, telco guy. And now he's uh, doing some, he's doing fiber installation with the cable company there, uh, a company called Seaspire. And he showed me the fiber splicer. It was amazing. 15 grand. He said, you, just, you put the fibers in there, let it turn it on. It does its job. It just, it's perfect. He's, a human can't do it any better. Let's look at the next picture. Gone, of the, move on here. Of, gone of the days are sitting there polishing it, huh? Here, yes, exactly. He said, no, no, we don't, we don't polish them by hand. This is a fail. This is a fail. Wow. And oh I'm, I'm not going to call anybody <laughs> out. Now, I, I, I split the, the heat shrink back myself. So if you see a, a scar on the connector and on the coax jacket, that's my uh, um, knife penetrating past the, uh, the heat shrink. But if you pull the heat shrink back, that connector was terribly put together. And that's why my STL didn't work for a day. The tower crew had Lord. left and I had to go find the problem. And I, I didn't mind. That's okay. I was actually better equipped than the tower crew to find the problem, but I had to put on, you know, the five, you know, the harness and all the safety gear and the heart, everything and, uh, and go find that problem. And I found two problems. One problem was caused by me from that Andrew branded connector that I don't like. Uh, so I fixed that and then it still didn't work. Oh, gee, many Christmas. What's wrong? And I got to looking at the, uh, at, uh, I pulled the jumper up. This is the jumper. That's, that's that, some of that very flexible cable. And let me, let's look at the next picture. Uh, see if it has, uh, th th this, th the whole thing just twisted. Okay. Sorry. These are out of order. This is uh, a fiber vault. A lot of you may see these in your cities. If you haven't looked inside one yet, uh, it's a fiber vault. And this is where the, the orange tube that you can see at the very bottom of the picture, that is the tube that they put in with that horizontal drilling process. And that runs over to our radio station in Greenville, Mississippi. And he's, he's um, pulling that fiber out and he's about to splice it onto uh, the, the other big fibers coming in from, from the right-hand side there. I didn't get to watch him splice it. I had some responsibilities in the station to do. Let's move on. Did but he tell you how many fibers were in that fiber cable? Uh, the, the, well, there's one right there. Um, he, <laughs> he, he, in, the, in the cable that goes into the radio station, there are 12 fibers. In okay. the bigger cables, I, I, there are a lot more. I'm sorry, I, I don't remember how many he said. He, his, his answers were a little confusing to me. But in the bundle that goes to the radio station, uh, and it's just a kind of a rectangular cross-section cable, uh, and it's, it's guarded on each on a couple sides by some foam stuff, and then there's the little package of fibers. And, but only one of them will be lit up, and there's one right there. Wow. So, that is T to, and, and I think that's hollow. I think that's really? actually hollow. I'm not sure. Yeah. He, he, I don't know. I, I got some confusing information from him. let's go to the next slide. But I thought that was amazing. I said, now this is crazy. This is the inside of part of a television transmitter site. It's in Nashville. And this is the abandoned part of the site. This is going to be demolished soon. That's a little creepy. Don't you think? Well, I'll say <laughs> there, there, there's no electrical power in here. You have to go in with flashlights. I was led in by a fellow engineer. He said, you got to see what this place. And, um, let's just say that apparently there's been a lot of beer drunk <laughs> in this building. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what else let's move on. That, that creeps me out. I'm watching you. Okay. Here's what I think. Here, here's a fail. I found out about, I should call it. I mean, yes, I know that's a male end connector. I get that. But do you see the circle around the pin? Do you see how there are no, no cuts? There's no springiness in that circle. It's a solid circle. Okay. Yep. Now let's go to the next picture. And hopefully it's the right thing. Yes. This is what I'm used to. You see how there are four slits in the circle, right? So it's got some give to it. It's got some springiness to it. And on an end connector, on the female part, that circle should mate up with a slightly, with a cylindrical and maybe slightly tapered part of the inside of the end connector. It's a part we really never notice about a female end connector. You know, we, we see the, the female pin in there that receives the, the male pin, but we don't really notice the well and the shoulder at the bottom of the well. I hope you're following along. And I may be calling the wrong things, but that's the best words I can think of. The, the, all it. Well, 
I've always used end connectors that had that springy, the slit, you know, so, so when you run it into the female, it, it, uh, it, it, you know, it collapses a little bit and makes a tight connection against the well and up against the shoulder in the bottom of the well. Let's go back to the other one. Let's go back to the previous picture. If it doesn't have that springiness, if it's a solid piece, it, it turns out there are female end connectors that that will not screw onto. It won't hmm. work. It, it will barely won't work, but it doesn't go it, it, right. And I don't, you know, it's a, uh, I, I, maybe Ooh, somebody cool. in the comments can tell me if these are supposed to be, but if you go buy a jumper these days, uh, oftentimes it'll come like this with no, no spring cuts in it. Again, it, it'll be a solid circle. And I don't know if it's two different standards or exactly what, but I'll, I'll tell you where that, that piece of coax there didn't fit. You know where it didn't fit? 150 feet up that tower to that power divider yeah, I showed you earlier for the FM translator. That's where it wouldn't fit. Brand new cable, brand new jumper, end connector wouldn't fit the bulkhead female end connectors on the power divider. And we didn't have another one with us that day and the sun was set. So we had to go back the next day. A tower guy had to come back the next day with a jumper, go forward again, back to the one with the split. And um, um, yeah, go on to the next picture there. So well, you, know, you know what new means, don't you? Yeah. What new Pardon stands me? for? What? You know what new stands for? What was it stand for? Never, ever worked. It never, ever worked. Yes. Yes, that's true. <laughs> that's true. All right, let's let's buzz through a few more. You know, we had that huge fail on Christmas Day in Nashville where the RV was blown up. Uh, the uh, perpetrator died and the AT&T building was uh, seriously damaged. This is now, by the way, this is not what we call in Nashville the Bat Building, the really tall building with the AT&T logo at the top. And it used to be a Bell South logo and some funny people uh, Photoshop a picture of Sauron's eye between the two spires. Yeah, that, that's it's not that AT&T building. It's an old AT&T where operators used to work and where billing used to be done and where switching is done. And apparently they, um, you know, people have complained about a single point of failure. I got to tell you that I, I know for a fact those AT&T engineers worked super hard to, to restore things, but you know, AT&T services were out over a good area. Well, I got AT&T fiber here at my house. And so our Christmas day, our internet's out and we're done opening presents. And somebody wants to watch some, you know, stuff on Netflix. So, uh, there's Josh bone to the rescue <laughs> with that. That's the same max connect that saved our butt in Mississippi. That's the same one. So, uh, and by the way, it has two SIM cards in it, one for AT&T and one, one for Verizon. The AT&T one, of course, didn't work because AT&T was totally well, almost totally down. So it's on, on the Verizon SIM card. We uh, operate off that for about three days. And there you go. Next picture. Let's move on. See if we can see if we can wrap this up. Ah, there's that female bulkhead connector. And remember the end connector with the male that with the solid ring, it will not fit in there. Doesn't work. Wow. And if I sound a little honked about that, I am. Now, if I'm doing something wrong, somebody could enlighten me in the in the comments on Facebook. That would be great because if, if, if I should have known better, I'd like to know better, but I don't know better. And so that, that caused that, that cost us an extra $500. Yeah. For the tower guy wow. to return. Okay. Next. Uh, this was sent in by a listener. Um, let's, I'm sorry. I forgot the whole story. Was this Mr. Golston that sent this in anyway? Uh, no, he, uh, had a, he had a, he, had a uh, he, he, had, they had a drunken driver, uh, run through and sever a bunch of connections and power and everything else and hit the pole in front of the building. We got a he picture took, of that. He, took, uh, up. he yeah. basically took the radio station home and got them on the air with the comrades. That's right. Them. That's right. Got, took it home, took a computer home, got the Comrex at home and bam, there you go. All right. This is where a drunk the, uh, driver hit what the high voltage vault. That, that, that was the termination point <laughs> <laughs> of, of the, of the accident, right? Yes. Yep. I think we got one more one more picture that shows the uh, the scene, the whole scene of the accident. Yeah, there we go. Yep, there he is. Oh, gee. Are we out of wow. pictures, Suncast? I think we, I think we are. If we're, if we're out of pictures, just take it. Okay, good. Thanks. All right. Those were some of the fails. I'm, I apologize. My fail for not getting your names on. Those of you who contributed pictures, thank you very much. And I, I apologize that I'm just not organized enough to get your picture on 
So many fails this year. Now, Tom, I got I have one more fail for you that happened today. Oh, pl- yeah. Please tell us about it. Yeah. Oh, well, I have a I have a client. They uh, they carry college hockey and they use Comrex Bricklink. And unfortunately, I they never talked to me about the Comrex Bricks, so I completely forgot they had it and realized today that, you know what? We probably should update it to get rid of Flash because tomorrow we won't be able to log into it, maybe. Mm. So um, we actually updated the studio one the other day because they had a router failure. And I said to the college, why don't you give me a call you know, t- today and we'll let's update your end so we don't have any issues. Um, now, I do have it set up. So when they plug it in and it gets an IP address, it just goes and goes right into the studio without a problem. But mm-hmm. so they call me and they have the Comrex brick plugged into a hardwired uh, LAN connection and the computer they have me get into is on the uh, Wi-Fi, which are two separate IP addresses. Oh, okay, fine. Well, Comrex's uh, t- uh, device manager tool wouldn't find the Comrex. So oh. they they have an IT guy working with me. So he, take, he unplugs the Comrex and plugs the cable into the uh, computer and brings up command prompt and runs uh, IP config. And of course, it gives us the IP address of the computer on the LAN side, and it gives us the IP address on the Wi-Fi. And he then unplugs the cable and plugs it into the Comrex, and he says, okay, well, here's your IP address. And I said, well, wait a minute. It doesn't work that way. You, you, I mean, the computer pulled an address of dot one seven seven. I doubt the Comrex pulled the same address. He's, oh, it doesn't well, go yeah. away that fast. I'm like, dude, it doesn't yeah. follow the ports. And, and and you do IT for a living? <laughs> it, yeah, it, it doesn't it follow the Mac. Um, I, I mean, it's hey, new, new Mac address, DHCP server. I mean, it's a new device saying, I want an IP address, I want an IP address. And the, the DHCP server says, oh, well, that's a different Mac address. I'm going to give you a different IP address. I don't know what happened to the right. other guy. I don't care right now, but I'm going to give you a different IP address in case he comes back. Right. So I said to the guy, uh, I said, can you can you plug the computer into another another jack there in, in the press box? Yeah. Well, you know, well, we can't do that and blah, blah, blah. This, I'm going to have to go get this tool to do something. And all of a sudden he goes, wait a minute, let me grab this cable here. Let me plug it into this jack over here. How's that? And it's like, didn't I just say to do that? <laughs> and, and of course, I, I, I run command prompt because I'm into the computer. I'm like, oh, look, now we know. Okay, it's on the same, supposedly on the same subnet as the uh, Bricklink. I bring up yeah. Comrex's program. Now it found the Bricklink. And guess what? I was right. It gave it, it, gave it a different IP address. Of course it did. <laughs> Yeah. And and then life was good after that, but it was like, and you do IT for a living. I'm I'm just the dumb RF guy. I mean, eh, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Tom, we're, we're gonna have to wrap the show up quick. Be, be thinking of our tip of the week for our, for our friends. Yeah, <laughs> just make it to the end of 2020. Maybe maybe next year will be better. Our show is brought to you in part by Angry Audio. And Tom, you know these things are great. This is the uh, the Bluetooth audio gadget. If you've got a studio at home, and a lot of us do nowadays, and you need to put phone callers on the air, you can do it with Bluetooth. Just connect your phone, your cell phone, to the Bluetooth audio gadget and pair it up. There's a switch right here. It's spring-loaded, see? Right there. It puts in the pairing mode and get yourself paired to that. And then it's got professional inputs and outputs on the back so that you can bring audio out of your phone and then over to your audio console. And then from your audio console back to the phone, you know, for your mix minus so your caller can hear you. This is the great way to put callers on the air from your home studio or your podcast studio. Use your cell phone to do that. And, you know, hey, if you've got a request line, just you know, forward it to your cell phone. You don't have to give out your cell phone's number to take calls. If you've got a, you know, a, a request line phone number at the radio station, just forward it to your cell phone and the callers will never know the difference. And you can put the callers on the air. That is an awesome thing. The Bluetooth audio gadget also will play audio, high quality audio from your cell phone. So if you've got uh, music, for example, recorded on your cell phone, either files back or maybe you ran out and did a quick interview with your cell phone and you want to play that back into your console, don't fiddle with a bunch of, you know, uh, micro USB connections or uh, with a a lightning connector or a USB-C connector. Just pair it with the Bluetooth audio gadget. And when you're playing audio one direction, it knows to go to the high quality mode, you know, not the phone mode, but the high quality mode. So it'll play great quality audio from your phone 
into your audio console. You ought to check this thing out. And the whole line of audio gadgets and gizmos from Angry Audio. You do that by going to angryaudio.com. Angryaudio.com. Remember, as they say, don't get mad. Get angry. Angryaudio.com. Hey, we're going to hear a real quick testimonial from uh, Gary Morrill about Max Connect Wireless. He speaks the truth. We'll be right back. I'm Gary Morrill. Midwest Regional Director of Engineering for Alpha Media. When I first spoke with Josh Bone about Max Connect, he told me they'd work great for remote transmitter sites where connectivity was a challenge. And you know, he's absolutely right. We even have sites where we're using this as a backup to our STL using Max Connect's dual carrier option, and it works perfectly. We also have times where we need to be able to get out to a venue where it's kind of challenging because everybody and his brother is trying to stream video at the same time, like at a big sporting event. And you know what? Our data gets through every time because it's prioritized packet data. It works for us. It'll work for you. Max Connect. Check it out. Thanks a lot, Gary. For Max Connect Wireless, go to maxconnectwireless.com. That's the website. And it's spelled funny. I know there's a link in our show notes, M-A-X-X, then a K, Max Connect wireless and uh, you can choose your provider you can use you know at&t or verizon or uh, sprint or t-mobile uh, they all have uh, agreements with max connect wireless love that stuff all right tom um gee we're out of pictures we're out of fails thank goodness this year is just about over how are you gonna spend the next few hours my friend oh i'm not hearing you are you muted on the couch go to sleep there we go <laughs> go to the couch and go to sleep that sounds good i like that idea that's what I do every New Year's I, Eve. I'm Mr. Excitement. Come on. I got a I got a text from my wife and I was on, on the way home. She said, get a bottle of that sparkling grape juice so that we can celebrate with Michael at midnight. <laughs> oh. That's great. Yeah. Yeah. So Tom, um, uh-huh. uh, <laughs> I, I want to, I want to reiterate and let people know again, if they missed it at the, at the beginning of, of the show, uh, we are going to on our uh, Facebook page, uh, we're certainly going to be uh, doing several things. One of them, as soon as we get it, which should be sometime tomorrow, we're going to post a link for a Zoom, uh, a Zoom meeting, a Zoom session that should be occurring at about 4 p.m. Eastern time this coming Sunday. Uh, it'll be a service for Chris Tobin, and I believe the uh, the same uh, the same priest who's doing the uh, the service uh, for Chris's burial is going to be uh, in this Zoom meeting. We'll get details on that. Uh, our friend, our engineer friend, Rodney Belazare in New York City, and he just texted me, by the way, just, just emailed me. Um, Rodney Belazare is going to uh, get us that link. Uh, he's working for the folks at ESPN Disney. And if I'm understanding correctly, the kind IT department, uh, marketing, whoever handles it at ESPN Disney is making that uh, Zoom session available uh, on their corporate account. So there should be plenty of bandwidth for everybody. And uh, we can... Um, I don't know how it's all going to go. I may be asked to say a, a few words, but watch our, our space for that. And we'll, we'll post it as soon as we have it. Uh, again, we will be doing a tribute video for Chris Tobin, uh, who passed away last December the 19th. So what a way to end the year. What a year. And, uh, I think, uh, you know, look, we, we're all intelligent, but we, we luck doesn't know that it's 2020 or 2021. Right. Uh, you know, it, but it, it's, it's, um, Maybe you do believe that. Maybe you don't. Either way, we just feel like we need to get out of this year, and uh, we're almost almost there. Big time. Tom, Big do you time. have anything you're looking forward to next year? Um. Well. Uh, well. My uh, my son and his girlfriend got engaged on Christmas Day, so I don't know. If I heard. Gonna rush it. But uh, if they, if they don't it, it, if they decide to rush things along, we may have a wedding to go to. Oh, and my daughter will be graduating vet school. That's right. That's right. So, uh, you know, I, I saw a number of successes with your daughter and vet school, a number of milestones this past year. So 2020 wasn't all bad. Uh, Sarah did a great job, no. didn't she? Oh, she's, she's done a wonderful job. Uh, she's, you know, she's, she's, she's a superstar. What, what yeah. can I tell you? Yeah. So, well, uh, and, and my, my son's got a, got a great girl. Uh, she's going to marry him, even though I'll be your father-in-law. Um, and <laughs> <laughs> and, well and we're, hey, we're uh, very pleased to welcome andrea well uh that's good I'm, there are some good things that happened this year and i, and I know that there have been plenty but what i was going to ask real quick about the philosophy of blaming the philosophy of, of blame so i mean 
2020, yeah, with the whole COVID thing, we all started feeling pretty bad about that and all the restrictions and the people dying, of course. I mean, you know, a couple hundred thousand or more, well over that now. Uh, probably people that you know have have died. And and so um, we do we actually have more things going wrong this year than in your average year? Or do we just now have something that's easy to ascribe them to and we start counting them up in our heads, all the things that have gone wrong in 2020? And I'm not arguing one way or the other. I'm just saying that sometimes you keep track of things when you have something to blame or something to ascribe uh, those things to, whether they're good or bad. Uh, do you have any philosophical thoughts on on the attribution of, of bad luck this year? Well, you know, I think because we've all been sitting, or you know, for the most part, been sitting around. I, I mean, persons like myself and people like you, uh, and people like a lot of the people you know watching us um, have been working. We've been out of the house, mm -hmm. but after that what do you do? I mean, I come home and I'm here at the house. Um, and that gives you time to look at something and go, this happened. It's gotta be 2020 or it's gotta be the, or, you know, and it, it, it's gotta be a psychological mindset. Um, but, uh, you know, once things start getting back to normal, uh, even we're still going to have bad things happen and, and, and yeah. stupid things happen, yeah. but it probably won't seem as bad because we're not going to be sitting here and have time to think about it anymore. And you know, I, that, I, that's what we had yeah. in 2020. We had time to sit around and think. Yeah. It's a, uh, I don't know. It's, it's just, just a, just a random thought. You know, do, do we, do we ascribe it, it, It's almost the same thing. Like if you buy a new car, let's say, I mean, not the, let's say you buy a red Buick, right? You notice all the other red Buicks on the road. You notice all the other cars. Oh, yeah. that say, hey, and you never pay attention before. It's just like if, a, and, and a, if a woman buys a, a beautiful dress and wears it to a party, and someone else has the same dress, it's going to, oh you know, goodness. she's going to notice that right immediately, or if it's even close, right? Now, you know, mm -hmm. guys don't say, guys usually don't, hey, you got the same suit, I got, it doesn't, doesn't matter to guys. Uh, but but there are things that we we tend to be um, attuned to or focus on, uh, depending on, on. and I just, I just wonder if we're focused on bad things happening and attributing them to, to 2020. I don't know. Well, we could be. We could be, um, but then again, it just seemed, you know, let's see, you know, for example, those two tower things of mine, it just seemed that, uh, I've never had that happen in 40, 43 years in the business. So, you know, and, and that 18 and that eight and that AT and T bomb on Christmas day. Oh yeah. Yeah. And, like, I, and, and several of our, of our beloved colleagues passing away. Yeah. It, it, it just doesn't, it, it, it yeah, I mean once again, it may be because we've been sitting around and have time to think about it and ponder, but, uh, mm -hmm. it can, maybe there is something to it with the, uh, you know, with oh. 2020, I don't know. I don't know why. I don't know what, what happened. I don't know why we took this vector, but we did. And, uh, all we can do is, you know, make the best of it. I, th I think most of us have a bad attitude about 2020. And, uh, and I know that, you know, based on memes and what people say, we're looking forward to 2021. Maybe it'll be better in part just because we want it to be better. Exactly. Um, but, but, you know, which brings in that this is New Year's Eve and, you know, everybody every year is always happy new year, happy new year, happy new year. And, and my philosophy is, well, okay, what changes at midnight? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Exactly. If you're sick, you're still sick after midnight. If you don't have any right. money, you don't have any money after midnight. If you're, you know, it's, so no, nothing really changes. And, and that, that's why I've never ascribed to being a New Year's New Year's <laughs> Eve kind of guy. It's like, I'd rather lay on the couch and go to sleep. <laughs> yeah, I, I hear. And if people are, who are hurting are still hurting. And all the, yep. you know, the reason that you said and, 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 uh, and others, you know, not, nothing really changes except that year clicks over. But some of us, some people, uh, you know, ascribe a better attitude to it. And, and uh, I do at least to some degree. So let's go mm -hmm. for that. Tom, it, it's it's good to have this talk with you. I appreciate the, the sharing of the pictures, and thanks again to the people who sent pictures in. I, I appreciate it. Oh, you bet. Those were great. Those were absolutely great. We're going to have uh, a number of guest hosts in uh, in in 2021, and uh, in fact, I just heard from our friend Rodney Belazaire. Um, he's going to be a guest hosting a bit with us in in 2021. We're gonna we're gonna try him out. See how oh, good. He, how he works. To make out. sure I'm there to. Uh, I'm I'm sitting on the sidelines there to razz him. <laughs> well, and more and more Tom Ray would be a good thing too, you know. Okay, well, we can do that too. Okay. All right, folks, we got to go. Listen, 
our uh, our hearts go out to you. We love you, and thanks for uh, for watching this week in Radio Tech. Uh, keep uh, keep Chris Tobin uh, in your mind, and uh, and and realize that uh, um, I'm not really sure what I was well, what I was going to say, but uh, I, I thought I was going to say something pretty smart. Um, you know, one one of the best uh, has 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 left us, and um, uh, if if we could just emulate some of the things that that Chris Tobin did, how he was a complete gentleman and uh always curious and looking for better solutions all the time and seemingly tireless and always wanting for a little, little bit of adventure with what he did those are all great qualities that we should uh we could we could certainly stand to emulate we got to go thanks a lot to suncast for producing the show and keeping up with all those pictures and doing all the double boxes and stuff i appreciate that very much oh suncast I hope you have a great uh, new year's eve and thanks to andrew zarian who um i know is going to have an exciting christmas eve and weekend uh, I, th I think I heard his daughter's having a slumber party. So a whole bunch of five and six-year-old kids over at Andrew's house uh, this weekend. You guys take care. We'll see you next week on This Week in Radio Tech. Bye-bye.